Hello my new friends, cuties and ghouls, welcome back to my channel. It's Heather Steele and for today's video I wanted to share with you all my antiques and curiosity shelf. So I love to collect specimens from nature, old photography, and honestly anything that's rusty, chipped, or broken. So <laughs> along with that I mainly collect photography that I take. I try not to buy too many things. I'm more about going out and taking pictures and collecting those because I feel like at the end, you know, you can't take it all with you. So you might as well collect experiences because I feel like living your life is what really matters. But it doesn't mean I don't like to have little collections of things because how can you not, especially when you find cool stuff like this. So I'm going to give you guys a tour of my curiosity cabinet. So if you want to see something creepy, something that makes you go, hmm, that's interesting. Just keep on watching this video. Okay, so this is my curiosity cabinet. It's not really a cabinet yet though, I guess, because I don't have doors on it. But this is what I'm using for now. This is the Billy bookcase from Ikea. If you followed me for a while, you guys know that I have used the Billy bookcase for collections of mine in the past. I have a bunch of these in my storage unit, so I figured I would use what I have, but in the future, I would like to get something else for this collection. I would like something that I could paint and customize and sand and distress. So in the future, they will be changing up. Um, but for now, this works for me perfectly fine. So I'm still debating on if I want to get doors for it or not, because every single day I dust these shelves and every single day they're dusty again. Okay, so let's start with the top shelf. So. In the top corner here, we have some cabinet cards, and I just put them up there with some removable like poster mounts. So I'm hoping that they'll come off easily without destroying the card or anything like that. I'm a little bit nervous, but I think they'll be okay. So in the back there is actually a woman that is in mourning wear, and I love her. I got her at a local curiosity shop called The Weeping Glass in Pittsburgh. Saw her there, had to have her. Above her is a tin type I love. And I have this cabinet card of a woman named Lizzie. Her full name is on there somewhere. And of course, no collection of <laughs> curiosities is complete without a creepy baby doll head. So this is a head that I got off of eBay for, of a composition doll. I believe it was called a horseman head doll. I'm sorry if I got that wrong. I don't really want to move her at the moment because I don't want to mess up everything around her. So next to her is actually one of my favorite group photos. This is a little cabinet card of a family, and I love her poofy sleeves. Look at those. I would love to have that dress. There's some really cool like ivy border around this, or maybe it's flowers. Yeah, it's flowers. It's not ivy, but still really cool border. I just love the look of this. So um, I guess I should explain now before I get too far ahead of myself that I am a collector of early photography because I find the processes that they used to get photography going to be so fascinating and just beautiful looking. Like you don't see things like this today unless someone's actually trying to recreate it. Like I just think old photography is incredible. So that's a big love of mine is collecting photography. And what I like about it is that it does not take up very much space at all. So I've been collecting this stuff for about a year now and I'm able to put it all like in a shoe box, no problem. So back to the baby doll head, what was it about her that made me want her? Well, I've really wanted a composition doll for a long time, but I also wanted something that had a story to it. And I just feel like this chipped up old doll has seen things, you know? So that's what really drew her to me. I don't like perfect new things. I like things that have age and character because I almost feel like they have a little bit of soul to them because of the people that have loved them. So this one, you can tell someone was trying to fix her up because she has epoxy like all over her. Like you can tell she was a project dolly and the seller was actually selling her mainly for her eyes, which actually open and close 
They're amazing. So next to her, we have some tin types. Remember I had mentioned about people recreating these? Well, this tin type was done by my friend VPS Gettysburg. Um, he has a studio out in Gettysburg and this is from a cemetery and I love this tin type so much. He actually sent me two of them. He was so kind. I really like this one. She almost looks kind of like a shadowy figure whenever you stand back a little bit, so I love that about her. So um, this tin type, I have named her Alice because I actually ended up buying an autograph album from the same seller that was for a girl named Alice, so I like to give the pictures names and that's how Alice got her name. Okay, hopefully that helps a little bit. So if you guys saw my last video about my antiques, then you know about this post-mortem photograph. Yes, that is a real photo of a dead woman laid out in her casket and it is from the late Victorian period. So I love her. She was an incredible local find. And I know it's hard to see her because I have lighting like straight on the cabinet because it's so late in the day, but I kind of like that she has this like yellow and like metallic silver look to the photo when light is shined on it. I think that's just so fascinating. So over here, this has become the nature corner of my cabinet. I recently purchased a Luna Moth and I love it. It's so beautiful. I've been wanting to start collecting butterflies and moth specimens and beetles because they're so fascinating. So I was really excited to get this for my collection. I was spamming her on Instagram all day yesterday because she's amazing. She came with this incredible display case, but I could totally take her out if I needed to and put her in a display of my own. So I might do that in the future, but for now I have her in this case that I kind of have to lean back there. So this right here is one of my favorite tin types. This one is of a woman sitting in front of a tree. So I love how her hands are out of focus and just her face is in focus. And you can see the tree branches behind her. So I wanted to kind of keep her in like the nature theme um, because of that. Also, I have this antler here that I found and cleaned up a little bit. It's pretty rough, not gonna lie, but um, I do really like it. It has a very interesting shape to it, and I have always wanted an antler, so I was so excited to get this. So I just kind of lean her up against there. Also, whenever I'm out on my nature walks, I'm always collecting pine cones and things. So there are like so many <laughs> like little baby pine cones and big pine cones here on the shelf. Okay, so back to this. I know I'm like all over the place. <laughs> so this is a little beetle I bought recently at an antique shop. And what I love about him is like his cute little legs. Look at his little toes. Whoop, almost dropped him. That happens a lot. He is so cute. Yeah, I really like beetle feet. I just think they're so adorable. So next to him is something that I put together. Um, so this is actually uh, some bones of a possum that I found in the woods. Uh, so it's pretty rough. I have not attempted to like clean them up or anything. Uh, this possum was dead for many, many years. Um, those are just the bones that I found on a hillside. So um, I just kind of have them in this jar. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to actually clean them. I might, or I might just leave this very natural to represent, you know, life and decay and everything else. So, but um, I have like 20 of these bottles from Target and I am going to fill them with all sorts of things. Um, I don't collect wet specimens. They really freak me out. Like I do not like wet specimens at all, but I'm planning on putting like little nature things in these jars, like bones and leaves and <laughs> dirt samples from crazy haunted places, things like that. So um, I have plans for these. You'll be seeing more of that in the future. 
So there's something about this girl where I just feel like this kinship with her. I can't quite explain it, but um, this cabinet card actually came from Pittsburgh, like originally. So she's somebody's great grandmother from my area. So love her so much. I kind of feel like she, in my own little fantasy world, would have like a little collection of butterflies like this or something. Up here is a cute little girl in the cutest bonnet and her hair is actually tinted which is adorable, it's tinted red. And um, she's on this super cute chair. This was a local find. There's actually a whole family album that goes with her and I'm gonna try to buy it at some point. Um, this was my first cabinet card, bought her at the Weeping Glass. Something about her, she just has like the sweetest energy and presence to her. And then this little girl, um, there's actually a name on the back. This was taken in 1907 super cute it's of a little girl that is holding flowers and there is an old wicker stroller there and then I have some more tin types up there so I have been rambling so let's get on to the daguerreotype shelf um, so I actually have some ambro types on here uh, this one's just a regular ambro type but I have a few ruby ambro types such as my favorite girl here, this is Hilda, and I consider her to be my muse. And basically, if you take her out of the case and you hold her up to light, she is red, like deep ruby red. It is so awesome. <laughs> here I have a union case, and the design on it is of a fairy. And inside, we have a tin type of a woman what I really like about her is all the painted on jewelry and I like that ribbon in her hair. So I'm not gonna be able to show you guys every single Ambro type close up because this would be a very long video, but I basically keep them all on this shelf. This one is beautiful. I mean, the details are just unreal on her. She is incredible and next to her is my daguerreotype of a woman with an eye condition absolutely amazing she is from around the 1850s and back here i have something really cool so this is a tin type that is cabinet card size i have never found one of these since it's incredible look at their clothes and I love the perspective the photographer went with here. I think it's so lovely. So this is a little one that I named Eliza and she actually came with this really cool stand. So the thing about her is that she's a type of Ambro type where they would scratch off the background of the image. I always wondered why she appeared to pop out at me and that's because that's exactly what the photographer intended whenever he put this image together of her. So just a really interesting piece to have. And I always wondered like, what was wrong with her ear? <laughs> well, now I know it's because they mean a little boo-boo when they were scraping off the background there. Back there is one of my favorite cabinet cards of this little boy. And he is so darn cool. He has like a cool little spiky hairdo and he's just awesome. So here's my other daguerreotype and I can't believe I only have two of these. But um, I actually bought this from my friend Becky, and how could I pass on this? Look at her. She almost looks like a fine art painting. It's amazing, and look at her hands. Love her so much. And here's what the front of her case looks like. It has like a sun on it, so damn cool. And of course I have my corner babies because I like to collect cute little creepy babies, <laughs> so. Here's one with a hidden mother in the background. This is actually just a tin type. And here are two more tin types up there. And I kind of think they look like cute little siblings, don't you? So over here we have more tin types. And down there is actually a glass negative. Super interesting thing. I don't want to pick it up right now because I'm balancing a camera in my hand, but these are really cool and I want to get more of those. Ah, so down here is the I don't know what to do with this stuff shelf, but it's starting to actually look pretty nice. So uh, in the middle here, I just have this candle holder thing. Not sure why I put that there, but it works for now. 
Over here, we have a silver plated teacup that is dated March 2nd, 1898, but it isn't any ordinary teacup. It's a mustache cup, so there's actually this guard on the side there to keep your mustache from going into your drink, a problem I personally suffer with. So I had to pick up one of these so that wouldn't be an issue for me anymore. Um, in there, we also have some incredible Victorian calling cards. And this one's so cool. It has a fuzzy edge to it. And inside, you can see the name of the person from Ohio. So darn cool. So I have this one. And then I have this other one that's really sad because I am Miss Forever Alone. So it says, without friends, the world is but a wilderness. Bright be the skies above thee and green the earth beneath thee. May thou hast friends that love thee and sorrow never know. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? So nice. So yeah, um, the other one just broke back here. I'm so sad. <laughs> this thing has come off or it's about to and it makes me sad because this one is so pretty so I just kind of stuck them in the teacup and I was wondering like what am I gonna do with this teacup and uh, that worked out pretty good so I just kind of put some of the pine cones on there and this is really neat so are you guys ready to get a little bit spooked because this thing really freaked me out so I bought this because I love old group photos from people of the Victorian era and this one is really cool I mean the outfits are great like these kids look awesome and then I flipped it over and I was reading like oh March 10th 1897 oh my gosh what is this because <laughs> I thought it was a watermark but it's this picture of a mom and a baby on here for some reason I have no idea what's going on with that if it was up against a picture for a long time and that picture transferred, I have no idea, but that was kind of spooky and I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So this is an awesome piece. I love this. And I'm gonna eventually be scanning this and putting it on the internet. I have no idea what school this could be. If it's local, if it's not, I honestly have no idea. And it bothers me. It bothers me not to know the story behind the photos in my collection you know but it's also kind of fun to give them my own little story about them so moving on <laughs> so I have death cards here this is a death card of Elsa Stewart and these were basically just something that a family would stick in their cabinet just to kind of uh, remember someone by so these are really neat they always have the coolest designs on them. And fun fact, I actually accidentally ended up with the obituary to this death card, which still blows my mind that I'm gonna eventually stick it on the back so they don't get separated again <laughs> because 1888 was a long time ago. So <laughs> it'd be pretty messed up if I finally lost that obituary, you know? So back here, I have some pieces of a family album there was like a whole stack of these for like five bucks and I was like, how can I say no to that? So I just realized this is a tin type. I don't know how, I didn't know that until now. I thought it was just like a regular, like early paper photo, but no, it's a tin type of a woman and she has some amazing details on her. Everybody was so fancy back then. And here's the back side of this and the name of this family. So I'm actually not gonna pull out the other one, but she's back there. I don't want to um, risk everybody falling over because <laughs> it happens to me a lot. Um, so back over here is the one that I call the creepy couple because I mean, look at them. They are so creepy. I love it. I think something about like those bowler hats just instantly makes someone creepy to me, so. They're just a really cool like tin type that has quite a bit of decay to it and I really like that about them. They just kind of hang out back there being creepy in their own little corner over there. Uh, there are some more death cards. 
these two are actually of the same woman. And then this is apparently Victorian era butterfly wing art. Yes, it's made out of real butterfly wings. And that is from Venice. So interesting. And you guys have already seen my goggles and my hand mirror from the 1800s like a million times. The goggles are from the 1940s. And this is a turkey feather that I found recently and I lovingly cleaned. Didn't know where the hell I was gonna put it, but look, it found a home. So in this little jewelry box, we have all kinds of goodies. You guys have already seen this. If you see my other videos, this is a necklace. Well, it's actually a watch fob made from real human hair. Absolutely beautiful craftsmanship. Oh, and look at that. We have a little moth friend in there that I still need to do something with. <laughs> and the rest are like various Victorian jewelry pieces. So this shelf is kind of a mess. I just have some like camera and ghost hunting equipment over here and a print of mine from my website, www.heatherexplores.com. Get a print for your crypt. You know, you'll want one. So this is something I've been wanting to show you guys. I haven't really posted it much on Instagram yet, but I found this incredible framed uh, tin type set. The frame is modern, but the tin types are so badass. So here's one of this lady with a baby and the baby's face is like all blurred out. It, it's so good. There's a background in there that's painted. Such a cool one. Then in the middle, we have this lady with a tinted handkerchief around her neck or a little scarf. There's some books there and there's this girl with a cute little hat. So I just put them here for now because I don't know where to put them, but uh, had to get them because these tin types are actually fairly big and they're nice. So why not? So that is all for Heather's Cabinet of Curiosities tour. I hope you guys had fun with that one. And if you want to see more videos on creepy old things like this, let me know by hitting that thumbs up. And don't forget to follow me on my Instagram at Heather under dash explores so you can follow the creepy places I end up going and photographing for you lovely people. So all of my info is going to be in the description of this video. So go check that out and I will see you all in my next video. Bye for now.